After playing the drums, I want to learn the accordion. I want to be in the front. I want to see what it feels like to give them, give them that excitement. Uh, let me say that to me it's fun now. I didn't realize I would learn the accordion. I never thought that the instrument of accordion would attract so much attention. We get so many people to, to really focus on what you know. You know, you like just playing from your heart. Really can can. It gets a lot of a lot of kids' attention. I started seeing kids going to we started playing a little house parties. So my first polka was at the Rico Polka. Uh, I started at the age of 13 playing that polka every day, every day, every day, and I played it with my dad. And before you know, my dad said, if you can learn a, if you can really learn accordion, I'll buy an accordion. So oh, I'm practicing. That's all you heard at home, just you know, playing around with the accordion. I learned more polkas. Before you know it, we I was playing with my dad's band. Now again, they had some other bands called, we started forming a band called Las Estrellas de Houston because my cousins started joining along. Our family started coming along to our shows. So they started picking up on the instrument. My cousin picked up on the bajo sexto. My, my uh, other nephew was picking up on drums. And before you know it, us realizing and practicing at home, we were becoming a family band. So we formed Las Estrellas de Houston after so many years of following my dad and performing. And we used to have another man that would sing for us because we didn't sing Spanish. We spoke up the Bodegas at home. Here we are listening to records and the old records back in the days where it was hard to understand it. What are they saying and this and that? Because, you know, my dad said the next step is you guys got to sing. You guys got to learn how to sing. You know? And I guess following all these musicians, all these artists, even back then, you know, I was I would listen to Los Relámpagos, I was listening to Los Cachorros, I was listening to Tony La Rosa, um, even tropical bands. I was here like. Um, uh, Little Joe and La Familia back then, it was Tex Mex. I would hear so many bands. I would hear all these, how fans were getting so excited. And I was trying to understand the difference. What's Conjunto? What's Tex Mex back then? What's, why is it orchestra? Why is it. You see one band with just four instruments. And you see these other bands now, they're adding sax and they're adding pianos. And, oh my God, so I started trying to learn the trend, started understanding. Well, at the same time I was at home, I love to dance. Every time I went to the shows, I would dance. I would go out there on a dance floor and I would love to dance. So I were trying to figure out our own idea and imitating whoever we were learning from. I mean, we would learn their music. You know, you're always going to follow someone. And to me, we would learn their music. We would practice their songs and be at home and playing around. Us playing around and dancing and being silly was really something we didn't know we were creating. It made you create. It made us really, I mean, I guess it was making us brainstorm without realizing it and be creative that we could uh, uh, put this together on a show. So we're playing at so many house parties. Is it something like cooking, where uh, if you want to get creative, hey, I've already used these spices, I'm going to throw another little spice <laughs> exactly, in. Exactly, and I love to cook, that's a good idea, good example, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. But at the, at the same time, I guess the joy of being on stage and seeing people, uh, you know, playing in house parties and seeing the kids now come to the front and look at us and like, we were motivating a lot of attention. We were getting a lot of attention to kids liking to see us on stage. And we were the youngest, youngest conjunto band at the time, following, you know, because I would see kids saying, you guys are playing what my grandma listens to, you know, my father and them listen to that old music, and we said, well, they're calling it old, but to me, I guess music doesn't have a time, doesn't have a generation, it's whatever you play and whatever you, whatever you get it from, it's going to be new to everyone else. Myself, uh, I came to the Valley in the mid-90s, when uh, no, Tejano was on top, man. It was big time. Selena, you guys. And, uh, of course, now it seems like uh, it's gone down a little bit. Uh, what, what do you see, the evolution? What do you see for the, for the future in, in Tejano? I guess it's a cycle, like in every generation. You know, Sometimes there's a cycle trend with you. It's going to be, maybe, uh, it can be... At the, at, at, back then, it used to be Tropical. Tropical was in. And then after that, it would be maybe, I think it's a five year cycle sometimes. It changes. Every five years, it would be, everybody's into Tropical. Another five years later, everybody was into Little Joe, you know, Orquesta. It was the sax, it was the pianos. And then every another five or six years, it was back into Conjunto. And then it started turning into Cumbias, or started being the Polka trend. It depends where our fans are going, you know. And, and I guess our generation at the 90s, it was very spicy because there was, there was so many young talents that were coming out of Texas. Because we thought that everybody we're listening to, we thought, what, they're all from Mexico. We were thinking that because that's who we were listening to. We were listening to Romaniana, we thought that well, Los Tigres and all these big bands, we thought, there's the one, they're, they're, they're coming from another country. Here we're starting something in our own backyard. And, it, and our fans, well, guess what they look, our neighbor could be Emilio, our neighbor could be uh, Ram, you know, anybody. And so we all got felt like we're all being family, that we could all go out and support so much. Our fans right now, for so long, 
I realized that uh, when the 90s were around, all those fans in that trend were growing up to our music. We were young. After that trend, I think a lot of our fans have gotten married, settled down, have kids. And of course, we always think about the economy. Is it hurting everybody? Is it hurting the trend? It's like every, every, every country, when the economy hits, when presidents change, you know, we never know what's going to happen. We worry about the first thing first, you know, our bills, our, our food on the table. Uh, entertainment is the first thing that's on the bottom of the list. You know, people don't go out as much now because we watch how we spend. I think those kids that have their kids now have grown up. Because now I'm meeting a lot of fans now that tell me, you know, I've stayed away for so, many, for so long that I've gotten married. And now that my kids are bigger, because we're coming back to the shows. We can come out and go out now, because it's hard to find babysitters at the time, too. We you know, we realize it. I mean, we're sitting there, we, you know, we can't, I guess our generation back then can't go to two, as many as shows as they did then. What's it like, uh, if you're on the road all the time, what's that like for your family life? Uh, how does that affect it? <laughs> well, you know, uh, first of all, my wife's a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're not on the road, we're pretty much at home. I know we're sometimes listening to music and try not to. I love to watch a lot of comedy, so I try to spend time. When I'm home, I try to spend time with my family. I try to spend time with my kids. I, I like to uh, uh, do other things, cutting the yard, just doing the homely thing, uh, or cooking. I love cooking and, and, and cleaning and, and, and realize what, if somebody sees me outside doing something, what are you doing out there? You know, it's just, it's, they, they start to realize, you know, we're like everybody else. You know, it's time to spend time with the family. So we try to do what we can. So we don't want them to think you don't want to come home anymore. But sometimes we're gone. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks. Uh, I've, I've listened to your music for years, and glad I'm getting to see you live. I haven't, haven't been able to do that yet. Well, you know, thank you, thank you so much. Well, this, uh, one last thing I want to say is it feels great about tonight, celebrating our 25th anniversary. We never thought we'd come this far and make an event this big and have such huge support, support behind us as our staff and our people are doing, as our special guest artists that are here with us. Like here's another artist, Sonny Salceda. He grew up listening to our music and, and it's weird to hear them say, you know, we look up to you and it makes me wonder how old are we now. But it's nice to know that we get to invite them and, and do something like this special for all our fans. Tell me who's who here. Uh, you are? My name is Ruben Mendoza. I play drums. I'm from Beeville, Texas. Okay, and you're with? Jaime Los Chamacos. You with Jaime, and yeah. you sir? The youngest member, Jaime Los Chamacos, one on four, four years, one on five. Um, play percussions for Jaime. Thank you sir. I'm Jaime's special guest, I'm Sonny Salceda, and a long time, long time fan of Jaime Los Chamacos since I think I was about 15 years old. Okay, and yeah. where are you from? San Antonio. From San Antonio, San Antonio. okay. And you sir? I so Eduardo Ordonez, and I play the bass, and I sing for Jaime. Ah, and where are you from? I'm from Alice. Alice. Alex. Okay. You know him very well. I'm Roald Jocelyn. I've been with the band for 20 years and uh, I live in Alice. With the Jaime and Chamaco. And he also formed the label, the uh, Alice Records. We made it possible for us to go on our own now, to be independent. And we, like we said, we're an independent label now and we want to thank Roald for having faith in Los Chamacos and, and all of us and sticking it out with all of us together and making it possible to right now we're going to celebrate our 25th year. 25 years together with Under Now, Jocelyn Records. Well, let's see, give me one final pose here, like with, with something original here. What's that? Okay. Yeah, hands up or something like, yeah, like he's got, yeah, there we go, good, yeah. Listen, thumbs up, yeah, that's a good one.